Hi, Cody here with Hardhead Veterans. Today I'm going to talk about the differences between a bump helmet and a ballistic helmet and which one you should potentially buy. So if you're a first time buyer or your experience uh, in this industry is limited, so you're not law enforcement, you're not military, uh, you just have no idea which one you should buy, I'm going to cover each one in depth so that you have a better understanding of why you would want one versus the other and the pros and cons. And just a heads up, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe with the bell notifications turned on if you want more head protection information in the future. Okay, so for the easy answer, a bump helmet is gonna protect your head from falls, um, anything where you could potentially be thrown out of a vehicle, whatever, whatever the scenario is, whether you're uh, rock climbing, uh, riding in a UTV, or doing some kind of water sports. That's where a bump helmet is going to come in handy. A ballistic helmet is going to stop rounds up to a 44 Magnum, uh, and then it will stop some shrapnel. So if you're military, law enforcement, or something like that, then obviously you're going to want a ballistic helmet. Uh, if you're not necessarily getting shot at, uh, other than maybe uh, being of that preparedness mindset, um, then you probably don't need a ballistic helmet. If you want it to just run nods or, uh, or just for fall protection, then the bump helmet is gonna be the way to go. Okay, so reasons to buy, as I kind of just explained. Um, if you wanna run nods and you don't need ballistic protection, obviously the better choice would be to buy a bump helmet. Uh, if you need uh, some kind of protection from your head from falls or or uh, whatever injuries that you might sustain to your head from doing s certain sports, then a bump helmet's the way to go. If you're getting shot at, or you're in an area where explosions are common, uh, then maybe a ballistic helmet is the way you should go. Um, or like I said before, if you're into preparedness, um, I guarantee you the people in Ukraine are wanting a ballistic helmet, not a bump helmet. So the choice is, uh, should be pretty easy to figure out which one you need. Um, and then you also have to look at uh, the cost of each. Obviously the bump helmet, because it's not ballistic, is going to be cheaper than the ballistic helmet. Okay, so now for the longer answer. Uh, I'm going to cover some of the qualifications and specifications of this helmet and then go over some of the pros and cons. Um, so the bump helmet weighs 1.4 pounds. Um, it's made out of polycarbonate blend. It has um, M-lock rails, hook and loop Velcro uh, on top and underneath for pa different padding systems. The Velcro on top, you know, you can use it to attach different accessories like uh, counterweights. And then as far as the qualifications, it's rated at ARPD 10-02. Uh, blunt impact standards of the U.S. Army, and then BSEN 1385 2012 whitewater rafting standards. And so some of the pros are that this is obviously, it's a lighter helmet than what the ballistic helmet is. Uh, it's got the same modularity as the ballistic helmet. So um, it, you got the, the same shroud, the same M-lock rails, uh, the same uh, Velcro on top and underneath uh, for different accessories. And like I said before, it has, it's rated for the uh, U.S. Army standards for, for blunt impact trauma, uh, as well as the uh, whitewater rafting standards. And not to mention that this is obviously less expensive by more than half. Some of the other pros is that obviously since it's a lighter helmet, it's going to be more comfortable uh, as well as because it's not ballistic and it's not meant for any kind of ballistic protection. Uh, we have vents on the top that's going to allow your head to cool off. So if you pair this with micro lattice pads, you're going to get even more ventilation. So during the heat of the summer, you're fighting wildfires, um, you're doing whitewater rafting, you're doing anything uh, of that nature where you're out in the heat. This is going to this is going to be awesome for you, especially if you don't need ballistic protection. Um, this is probably something that um, civilians are going to use more. Um, I mean, unless you're into preparedness, which uh, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously, uh, especially in 
in the days we're living in. Okay, so for the cons. Uh, it's obviously not uh, ballistically rated. Uh, it needs additional counterweights for MVGs. So although it's light, once you start adding counterweights and other accessories, it's still gonna feel kind of heavy. Once again, since it's not a ballistic helmet, it's not gonna be as durable. A ballistic helmet is gonna take a lot of damage before um, it gets destroyed. Okay, so now onto the ballistic helmet. Uh, our ballistic helmet is NIJ3A rated. So basically, it'll stop shrapnel in up to a 44 Magnum round. Uh, it can stop up to 762 by 39 with our up armor systems. Okay, so now on to what these helmets are made out of. Uh, our Gen 2 is made of DuPont Kevlar and our ATE Lite is made of UHMWPE. Okay, so now on to the pros of the ballistic helmet. It can stop shrapnel and up to a 44 Magnum handgun round. Because of the uh, ballistic material that it's made out of, it's going to last you longer, so it has more durability. Uh, and it's just as modular as our bump helmet. So you still have your M-lock rails, you still have your shroud, your hook and loop Velcro. You can upgrade your padding system to our micro lattice pads. Another one of the pros is that uh, it's got a sturdy design from DuPont Kevlar on our Gen 2 and then uh, UHMWPE on our ATE Lite. With the ballistic helmet, military and law enforcement applications and capabilities are extended because it is a ballistic helmet uh, and then it meets all impact standards set by the U.S. military. Primarily ARPD 10-02 and NIJ 3A standards. Okay, so for some of the cons of the ballistic helmet is that it's slightly heavier due to the ballistic material it's made out of. Uh, there's less ventilation. So between both of those, it being heavier and having less ventilation, it's not gonna be as comfortable to wear nonstop. If you have the micro lattice pads, it's gonna help a little bit because you're gonna get a little bit more ventilation. Another con is if you have a lower cut helmet such as this one right here, uh, it can obscure your hearing, and if you have an older design, like the Marine Corps LHW or uh, the PASGT uh, system, uh, it's going to prohibit your peripheral vision. So those are the pros and cons of the ballistic and the bump helmet. Now, which one should you buy? Okay, so now that we've covered all the information on the bump and ballistic helmet, the ultimate question, I guess, is which one's for you, which one, which one should you buy? The bump helmet, just remember, the bump helmet is for gonna be more for sports where you don't need ballistic protection, so if you're not military or law enforcement or you're not in that mindset of preparedness, uh, then you probably don't need this. So for the ballistic helmet, if you're military, law enforcement, or you're into preparedness, obviously you should save up a little bit more money and buy the ballistic helmet because a bump helmet is not gonna save your life from shrapnel or up to a 44 magnum round or with the up armor plate 762 by 39. So at the end of the day only you know what the right decision is for you when it comes to purchasing a helmet. We've armed you with all the knowledge you need to make an informed purchasing decision between bump and ballistic helmets with this video. Until next time make sure you hit that like and subscribe buttons down below and leave any questions you have about helmets in general in the comment section so we know what questions you all need answered in the future. HHV out.